the interest of fairness, we're gonna put the final four names in a hat. We're gonna draw out the first two that'll compete tonight for the Devotion Utah State Television Champion. The first name that we draw out tonight, Leo Wolf. He'll be taking on Porter Blake. That leaves next week Manny Lemons versus Brother Chatwin. And remember, the sheriff said so. From downtown Salt Lake City, Utah, at the Gateway, this is Devotion Championship Wrestling. I am Lauren Gardner, the Ciceroni, tasked with calling the action on this episode. And as we have just seen Big Papa Rob drawing out the names for the semifinals, on this episode, we will see Suren Porter Blake going up against Leo Wolf for a final position for the Match Madness Tournament, determining the Utah State Television Championship. After making his return in the Match Madness Battle Royale just last week, Tom Chad goes up against his old nemesis, Andrew Sowell. The winner of this match will be deemed the DCW Heavyweight Championship number one contender. Right now, let's go backstage to Zuren Porter Blake. After defeating women, men dressed as women, literal clowns, and the bottom of the barrel of competition, here in Devotion, I finally have a chance for some that should have been mine from day one. Championship gold. The Utah State Television Championship. And now I have to go through Leo Wolf for it. Happy to see you finally got some bite, Wolf. Oh, and I can't wait to taste it. Can't wait to challenge it and prove to you and everyone, everyone, that title belongs to me. Because victory is in my hand. We did it. I told everybody that you are the present and the future. That was step one. Step two happens tonight. Porter Blake, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. I've got nothing against you. He's got nothing against you. But we're going right through you. Because he's battered, he's bruised, but the alpha male Leo Wolf is going to become the very first Utah State Television Champion to make history. Hey, quit hitting me. You're lucky I don't take it out on you. But instead, I'm going to focus it on my next opponent. I'm gonna run straight through you, Porter Blake, to get to I, what I want, which is the championship. Utah State Television Championship. That's right! What did I tell you? Yeah, use that aggression. Use that aggression. Let's go. Don't go anywhere when we come back, the first of the semifinal matches. My death rate. Every worker in the country work three months of every year to pay the salaries of men like this bureaucrat. Let us 
must now dedicate ourselves in a holy crusade from the male fist of centralized bureaucracy. And to the winner goes all the glory. That's where we're fooling ourselves. The following will be a semi-final match for the DCW Utah State Television title. With both competitors in the ring, we are about to get things going. The official for this bout in the semi-final match, Ref Ian, he calls for the bell. It is sounded. Tony Blake and Leo Wolf start things off in a collar and elbow tie-up. Leo Wolf getting the better of the tie-up, going into a side headlock. Porter Blake able to catch a claw attempt from Leo Wolf. Blake looking to cross face, but it is blocked by Leo Wolf. Wolf able to get a side headlock, wrenched in again. Sue Ren grabbing Wolf's hair. And right off the bat, I think we can see that our official Ian is going to have his hands full in this bout up against the ropes. Ref Ian asking for a clean break. It has not given him the least bit, but Wolf also doesn't allow for a break at all as he holds on to Zhu Ren, Porter Blake, by grabbing at his follicles. What is that, huh? What do you think that is? Oh, you grab my hair, huh? Can you grab your hair? What are you talking about? Of course you grab my hair. You don't see that? And just like Porter Blake in classic Zhu Ren fashion, he is upset about Wolf grabbing his hair. I've, I've said it before in the past, folks, and, and the devoted faithful are, are well aware of it as well. Porter Blake does not need to stoop to these low levels, to the levels, I would even say, of real Wolf. However, now with a test of strength called for, the two enter into a Greco-Roman knuckle lock, and Wolf going for the underhanded knee hitting each other right in the thighs. A deep muscle contusion to the quads is a, an injury that can last for a very long time. Back into a collar and elbow tie-up and both grabbing at each other's hair, not relenting. Ref Ian has to come in and break the two. I mean, when, when, when they're both breaking the rules and they're both hurting each other, I don't know what more you can do. The two now trading stomps on each other's foot. Repeatedly, uh, a, a game of underhanded tit for tat, I guess. I mean, eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind, and we'll see if either of these two can see by the end of the match. But the prize has never been higher for both of these competitors, as is the Utah State Television Championship. And they are going to go to great underhanded lengths to make sure that they position themselves in the top place going in to the final round, whomever that winner might be. Wolf runs through Porter Blake with a stiff and solid shoulder tackle, goes for a second and delivers, putting Blake on his back. Blake back up to his feet, whipped off the rope as does Wolf. That's three times in a row. He shoulders Blake down into the mat, followed up by a European uppercut. But as you can see, we saw earlier the bruise on Leo Wolf's shoulder. Porter Blake taking advantage of that very visible infirmity. And Blake looking to make hay while the sun is shining, continues to inflict pain upon Leo Wolf on that bruise right across his bicep. Oh. Blake, known for his palm strikes, continues a barrage of attacks onto that contusion. Now pressing his foot right into it. Oh, that bruise that Wolf has was sustained last week during the Battle Royal, and Blake, having scouted it out, is using it to his full advantage. All the more, he's hoping to put himself in a better position, but the position he finds himself in right now is not a good one. That being in the corner with Leo Wolf poised and ready to pounce. That is if he can get past the pain that's shooting, no doubt, through his arm into the back of his neck. 
with Porter Blake in the corner. Wolf now pitches him across the ring and follows up, splashing into him. Throws him back in the corner again, follows up with another running splash. With his back towards us, Leo Wolf is looking to set something up. A forearm across Porter Blake's face. He pushes Blake. Blake springs into action, only to be caught with a drop toe hold. And Blake's throat drops down across the middle rope. Leo Wolf looking to make hay as well while the sun is shining, using the precarious position that Porter Blake finds himself in to Wolf's own advantage as he comes off the ropes with a leg drop across the back of Porter Blake's head, pushing his throat right against that rope again. At three minutes into the match, we see our first pin at fall attempt. Porter Blake, ever the veteran, knows exactly where he's at at all times, is able to get his hand up on the rope and stops the pinfall attempt at two. Blake now, again, going right back to that injured bicep of Leo Wolfs, targeting it repeatedly. But Blake has got to do more than just tee off on his bicep. He needs to transition and use that to his advantage, whether it be in a pinfall attempt or into a submission, which he has yet been able to do in the match. Blake pulls down all his weight across Wolf's bicep, springs back into the ring with a jumping knee to that same bicep. Blake goes in, headlock throws, holds on into a reverse near side cradle. Wolf kicks out at two, Blake continues on now grasping onto that injured arm, and any damage done to the arm is felt in the bicep, particularly when it's targeted with a knee drop right on top of it. Wolf is visibly upset, visibly in pain, and Porter Blake is just taking advantage of that discomfort to his own whim. Blake now, smartly allowing Wolf to get up without having to put himself in any vulnerable position. Keeps on with that wrist lock. But Wolf now going on the offense with those forearm strikes across Blake's chin. But Blake now comes back with those palm strikes and now shouldering right in to the bicep with a kick. A pump kick followed up. But Wolf comes in with a roundhouse, side roundhouse kick right to Porter Blake's jaw. Referee Ian checking in on both competitors and begins a count for both of them. They have until the count of 10, to which I think they will both easily meet. Both to their feet, the count stops. Wolf goes in for a fireman carry. Blake escapes and goes for the Russian leg sweep. The impact felt all through Wolf's bicep and Porter Blake is calling for it. We've seen this maneuver devastate many an opponent, but wait, Psycho is stopping Porter Blake from getting the Zao down. This allows Leo Wolf to come in with a jumping knee as he pulls Porter Blake off of the rope. Two, and that's it, folks. Leo Wolf is your semi-finalist Winner. And your winner, and moving on to the championship match for the DCW Utah State Television Championship, Leo Wolf. Leo Wolf using full advantage of his, well, might I say better half, Psycho. As it stands, folks, next week, we will see the last of the semifinal matches between Brother Chatwin and Manny Lemons. The winner of that match will then go on in two weeks to take on Leo Wolf for the inaugural Utah State Television Championship. Our main event is just moments away. Let's check in with Tom Chad. Pineapple chunks and chunkettes. Sprinkles of all flavors. You like that, huh? You like how we did that? Y'all know me. I'm the king of that pineapple thing. Pineapple crab, Tom Chad. I just want to talk about my number one contendership match. Me and my opponent, we, we go back. Andrew, we were brothers at one time. I've tested myself against you. I know what it takes to beat you. I'll tell you there's gonna be two scoops happening here. 
me scooping you up and putting you on the ground, and then me scooping you up again and pinning you. Yeah. 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 Andrew, I'm excited to face you again, brother. It's been a while since I've been in here, but you know what? You and I always put on some goods. Hey, Tom, Chad. You see, no one missed you. None of those fascist sheeple out there missed you. Nope. We didn't miss you. Nope. You stuck our nose in our business. Our business. And tonight, I'm gonna beat you and become the number one contender for the DCW Heavyweight Championship. Number one? We already have some gold. It's gonna look even better around my waist once I beat whoever the DCW Heavyweight Champion is. Don't matter who it is. Don't matter. Don't matter. <laughs> See, once I beat you and I beat the Heavyweight Champion, I'm gonna prove to all those sheeple out there that our cause is righteous in all those fascist, war dog, dumb, dumb wanna dudes. I'm gonna prove them wrong. Let's go. This match is to determine the number one contender for the DCW Heavyweight Championship. Making his way to the ring from anywhere but this fascist state. And to say a weight would be body shaming. Representing Andifa, accompanied by the Mockingbird Echo Busan and the Monster Nine, Andrew so well. It was just two weeks ago that we saw Andifa beat the Idaho Wrecking Crew to win the vacated DCW Tag Team Championships. I can think of nothing more frightening than if Andrew Sowa were to win the number one contendership and then go on to successfully win the DCW Championship. A DCW under the control of Andifa as a DCW that would not be representative of the people of the devoted faith. I need each and every one of you sheeple to be quiet during my match. Do not boo me, do not cheer for Tom Chet. If you're gonna do anything, do this. This is a microaggression. You are all sheeple and I hate you. And making his triumphant return to DCW, weighing in at 290 pounds, from the back of the ice cream truck, pineapple clad, Tom Mmm, yummy. A brand new outlook on life, but with a brand new video package as well. It's the ice cream man, pineapple clad, Tom Chad. Ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. 
Ice cream! Ice cream! Ice cream! Mmm, yummy! Tom, Chad, and Andrew so will have a history that goes back many, many years. Most notably, I would have to say, was shown on DCW television in episode nine of season one. Folks, go back and watch this I Quit match on our YouTube channel because it is a match you have to see to believe. A match that used everything you could possibly think of for weapons. From flat screen TVs to staplers, from shopping carts to kegs, this match showed the metal that these two men are truly made of. And it is not for the squeamish, I can tell you that much. But despite being put through a table, it was Tom Chad who put Andrew Sowell into a shopping cart, choking him out until Andrew Sowell conceded that he did quit, thus making Tom Chad the winner. I have to agree with the devoted faithful, yes, Tom Chad, we did miss you. Of course, last week when we saw Tom Chad come out and enter the Battle Royal, we knew that this was a Tom Chad who has had some time to reflect on his choices as he greeted Manny Lemons with open arms and high fives. It's the Tom Chad we love and the Tom Chad that we hope we can see do well in DCW. Officiating this number one contender match is our referee, Chris. So well. Tom Chad now comes off the ropes, crossbody across Andrew Sowell. Sowell able to kick out at two, and the match continues. Sowell looking to create some distance between himself and his opponent. And this is the Tom Chad that relishes on the participation from the devoted faithful. And I have to say, it is fantastic to have him back. So well up to his feet and receives a headbutt from the man from the Derriere Farms. We love it. Not once, now going for twice. Into the turnbuckle. Andrew Sowell definitely not loving it at all right now. Not to be stopped, Tom Chad continues. Into a third time goes Andrew Sowell's head into the turnbuckle. Tom Chad now telling Sowell to come out and meet him like a man, coming out with an inverted atomic drop for his greeting. Tom Chad on a roll now, going out. Onto the middle rope, ascending now perhaps, but Echo, Echo decides to interject himself in. Meanwhile, we can see Monster 9 on the outside of the apron. Tom Chad, perhaps flustered by Echo and Monster 9, miscalculates his drop. But Tom Chad still able to kick out at two despite Andrew Sowell looking to capitalize on the distraction and error forced by his Antifa comrades. And with just that quick distraction and error has come a change of pace completely in this match, whereas it is Andrew Sowell who is in the offensive position. Tom Chad looks to close that gap as quickly as possible, but yet to no avail. The devoted faithful rallying around Tom Chad, but Sowell has got, he's setting up, oh, is he gonna try a moonsault? Oh, that makes more sense. A Sowellian moonsault, I guess. Goes to the cover, two, and Tom Chad kicks out at one and a half. And this is what's so interesting to me about Andrew Sowell. He takes time to play with his opponents, like with that Sowellian moonsault, I guess I'll call it, instead of taking the time to do some actual damage to his opponent. He takes time, like right now, to jack jaw against the devoted faithful rather than taking on his opponent, rather than doing something effective. He lines up, looks to charge on Tom Chad. Tom Chad had plenty of time to see it coming and now puts himself in the driver's seat. He gets a big head of steam. Sowell sees it coming and delivers 
a seated senton drop across Tom Chad's clavicle. And this is what I'm talking about. Again, taking the time to rub it into the fans' faces rather than going in and capitalizing on the advantage that he just earned. Instead, op score something like a knee pressed across Tom Chad's throat, earning him a warning from our official Chris. And a tip of the hat to our referee in this bout as he's again having to warn Andrew Sowell to lay off the hair. I mean, this is about as high as stakes as it gets for the number one contender. The official is going to call everything that he absolutely can and everything that is in his purview. A stiff boot to the chin of Tom Chad. Sowell brings TC up to his feet whips him across the ring, looks to charge in. Tom Jack gets out of the way and Sowell gets a shoulder into the ring post. Now, a big dusty chop and a big dusty elbow from Tom Chad, followed up with a big roundhouse kick to the side of Andrew Sowell's head. Tom Chad now looking for what he went to earlier up to the top rope. That's a whole lot of man and a giant derriere leg drop. Tom Chad goes for the cover, two. Andrew Sowell kicks out at two. You gotta hand it to Tom Chad. A man who has been out of the game for a while has not shown very much ring rust. He has come into this bout as evenly matched with Andrew Sowell who has not had any break in week to week match scheduling. However, Echo is intervening, and Sowell takes the low road. And having scrambled his opponent's eggs, he goes for the cover. One, two, that's it, folks. Sadly to say, we have a new number one contender in Andrew Sowell. Your winner and new number one contender for the DCW heavyweight title, Andrew so well. This is just heartbreaking. Look at Tom Chad's face. At the start of the match, I speculated on a worst case scenario. One in which we saw Andifa dripping with gold. Well, folks, they are just one step further to reaching that unfathomable end. Stay tuned, folks, as we will let you know as soon as Andrew Sowell capitalizes on his position as the number one contender. Folks, on behalf of DCW, I'm Warren Gardner, the Ciceroni, and until next time, stay devoted. Now I will kill you.